Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 130 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope all of you are doing well, and I hope that your ears are ready for another listening session. Hopefully your English learning is going great, and you're enjoying this podcast, and I hope you're benefiting from it. Today, in this episode, I'm going to talk about a topic that I don't like. <laughs> this won't be the funnest episode for me. However, I'm sure a lot of you will like this episode because a lot of you will actually like this topic, which is Black Friday. So I'm not a fan of Black Friday, and I'll talk a little bit about my relationship with shopping uh, later on in the episode, but I definitely don't like shopping, so Black Friday is not necessarily uh, my favorite time of the year. However, uh, if you're listening to this episode around the time when it's released, uh, that means that Black Friday was just a week ago or a couple weeks ago, maybe, uh, depending on when you listen to this episode. Maybe it was only a few days ago. But uh, this episode will be released um, around the time that we have Black Friday. Uh, and so it's relevant, and I want to talk about it. Uh, so hopefully this will be interesting for you. Before we start... Remember to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast if you're ready to start listening to real conversations in English. A lot of people ask me uh, about what they should do if they can already understand me pretty well on this podcast, but they can't understand native speakers. Uh, well, I would definitely encourage you to uh, use my new podcast to help you reach that level because it will help you start to understand uh, real conversations between multiple people when they speak fast. That's something that's essential uh, when you want to reach a high level uh, in English. You have to be able to understand conversations and not just one person talking to you. Okay, so I recommend that you sign up for that podcast. The link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you want my training, my listening practice seminars uh, to help you understand English better and recognize the different sound patterns, then make sure to join my membership. The link is also down below. And if you like this podcast, please share it and please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about Black Friday. So what is Black Friday? This is the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, it happens after Thanksgiving every year. So there's no specific date because there's no specific date uh, that is always Thanksgiving. It's different every year. Uh, so this is uh, the last Friday of November every year uh, because Thanksgiving is the last Thursday. I think I might be wrong about that, but it's usually the last Thursday of uh, every November. And so uh, Black Friday is the day after that. And this is the day when all the stores around the country uh, release a lot of sales and discounts and promotions. And uh, they encourage you to go shopping at their store. So that's Black Friday in a nutshell. The phrase in a nutshell means in summary, right? In a few words. So 
that's Black Friday in a nutshell. It's the day after Thanksgiving when uh, everyone is supposed to go shopping because you find the best deals and the lowest prices at a bunch of different stores. So uh, what is the origin of Black Friday? Why does this exist in the U.S.? Well, I don't know for sure, but from what I found online, a lot of people think that people started to use this phrase Black Friday um, in uh, relation to the day after Thanksgiving, um, that this started in the early 1960s, maybe, uh, because the police at that time uh, would complain about the chaos of all of these uh, suburban tourists that would come to the city to begin their holiday shopping right after Thanksgiving. And they would also come for sporting events and other things. So they called it Black Friday. It was not a positive term. <laughs> so uh, why the day after Thanksgiving? Well, the tradition here is that the day after Thanksgiving is kind of the beginning of the Christmas season or the holiday season. So after Thanksgiving, uh, people look forward to Christmas. So um, a lot of people will do their Christmas shopping uh, during that period. So it makes sense that a lot of people would come to the city after Thanksgiving because it was time for them to buy all of the different Christmas gifts that uh, they needed to buy and maybe the decorations or whatever. So that makes sense. Uh, I can see how that started. And nowadays, uh, Black Friday is uh, a phenomenon that uh, everyone knows about here. And it's become uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, shopping day of the year. So that's Black Friday. Um, and this day is associated with Thanksgiving now. And it kind of interferes with Thanksgiving a little bit. Uh, you might have heard uh, stories of this before, how that uh, a lot of stores uh, encourage um, their customers to start shopping or to start lining up outside <laughs> the business um, on Thanksgiving uh, hours before midnight for example. By the way, the phrase line up means that you get in line to go somewhere or enter someplace. Before we continue with the episode, let me tell you about our sponsor, Grammarly. When it comes to written communication in the workplace, we all know how difficult and time-consuming it can be to ensure your writing is clear and effective, especially if you have to write in English and you're not a native speaker. Thankfully, Grammarly can help you with this. Grammarly is an AI-powered writing tool that gives you helpful suggestions while you're writing so that you can sound more natural and fluent. Grammarly's free and premium features integrate easily into your daily workflow, helping you save time in every stage of your writing process. I recently used Grammarly to help me write an important script for work, and its suggestions were super useful. I love that Grammarly detects when my writing isn't as clear as it could be and that it shows me what adjustments to make. If English isn't your first language, then Grammarly can help your writing sound more native, and Grammarly Premium tailors its suggestions specifically to multilingual speakers. In fact, 98% of non-native English speakers say that Grammarly helps them sound more fluent in their written communication. Also, Grammarly helps speed up your writing process by letting you instantly create first drafts, by helping you find the perfect final word for each of your projects, and by offering suggestions everywhere you write, whether it be documents, messages, emails, social media, or other apps. Communicate effortlessly with Grammarly. Go to Grammarly.com slash ESL. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash ESL. So... 
people are encouraged to line up hours before uh, stores open uh, at midnight, or maybe they open on Thanksgiving and start the deals on Thanksgiving, actually. Uh, I think that's uh, common at some stores now. So people might uh, stop uh, celebrating Thanksgiving early and then go and get ready to go shopping. I don't know uh, about how common that is uh, now in 2023. However, uh, years ago when uh, I was a teenager uh, or a young adult, I remember that that was still a thing. Uh, I don't do anything on Black Friday. I don't participate uh, nowadays, so I can't really tell you what it's like today. But in the past, uh, my friends invited me to go Black Friday shopping with them uh, a couple years. Uh, I remember doing that, and we had to go at night on Thanksgiving. So I remember that that was a thing <laughs> back then. I don't know if it still is nowadays, but uh, yeah, uh, because of that, Thanksgiving is kind of affected by Black Friday. And a lot of people criticize this because you shouldn't have to uh, be stressed during Thanksgiving about the fact that you need to leave because you want to be one of the first people uh, in line to enter some store and get the best deals. Um, it's not something that most people want to think about when they're celebrating Thanksgiving. So a lot of people criticize that aspect of Black Friday uh, because it kind of uh, ruins Thanksgiving a little bit. So uh, some people are not happy about that, but a lot of people want these deals, and so a lot of people are willing to sacrifice part of their Thanksgiving uh, in order to get these deals. So yeah, and how about my experience with Black Friday? Uh, I've already mentioned that I don't like shopping, but I also mentioned that I've been Black Friday shopping a couple times. Uh, this was a long time ago, maybe a decade ago or more. And I went with friends because uh, I would never do this alone, but uh, I was uh, convinced, I was persuaded to go with some other people. By the way, the word persuade just means to convince. So my friends persuaded me uh, to go uh, with them uh, to go shopping on Black Friday. Uh, and I remember going one year uh, with a few friends of mine, and we went to this store called Urban Outfitters, and we uh, got there, I think, around 9 or 10 p.m., maybe. Uh, this was on Thanksgiving, and the doors uh, were going to open uh, around midnight, so we were just in line for two or three hours, and there were a ton of people there. And then finally, the doors opened, and then they allowed a certain number of people to enter uh, at a time. So we couldn't all go in at the same time. There were too many uh, people in line. However, uh, they let in groups of people at a time, and people were kind of running around the store uh, trying to uh, find uh, the best deals on the clothes that they wanted, and it was pretty chaotic, to be honest. Uh, I did not like it. Uh, I kind of just watched everyone else uh, do that. Um, I was just there for the social aspect because my friends invited me. Um, but they went shopping, and I kind of just watched them and observed everyone else 
trying to find these deals. And that was uh, one of my classic uh, Black Friday experiences of lining up outside of a store uh, hours before midnight and then uh, going inside at midnight and uh, getting home really late, of course. And it definitely wasn't fun. But like I said, I was there for the social aspect. <laughs> I was there because my friends went. So that was uh, an experience that I can remember. And I can also remember uh, my first day on the job of when I worked for a clothing company when I was 17 years old. My first day on the job was Black Friday, believe it or not. In English, when we say believe it or not, we're just saying uh, this is true even though it's hard to believe. So believe it or not, my first day on the job was Black Friday and I had like no training and it was complete chaos. It was terrible. I had no idea what I was doing uh, as a worker there. Uh, I wasn't even supposed to start that day. I think I was going to start the next week, but they needed more workers for Black Friday. So they told me, we need you to come in, even though you haven't had any training and don't know how to do anything yet. It's okay. Just come in and help. And so that was my first day. And like I said, uh, it was really chaotic. There were articles of clothing everywhere on the floor. Everything was disorganized. All the customers were just uh, battling to find <laughs> the best deals. And people were asking me questions. And I had no idea because it was my first day. So I didn't know how to answer their questions. And I just kind of uh, tried to organize some of the clothes, but I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, it was a terrible start <laughs> to that job. Because if you're a worker at one of these stores on Black Friday, uh, it's not fun. This is definitely not a great experience. I feel sorry for these workers <laughs> who have to uh, work on Black Friday at night and deal uh, with all of this chaos. Uh, it's uh, not good. But uh, that was my first day on the job at a clothing store, a really popular clothing store. So I have that memory as well. Uh, nowadays, as I mentioned, uh, I don't participate in Black Friday shopping. Um, I don't really have much recent experience with this day. Uh, however, uh, I still see advertisements uh, for Black Friday, and uh, I'm aware that uh, it's happening, you know, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, however, uh, it's not something that I'm interested in. And in terms of its importance for businesses, um, Black Friday gives uh, companies a chance to uh, attract a lot of customers to their store, of course. And companies know that their competitors are probably offering some good deals on that day. And you don't want to uh, miss out on this day and have everyone go to your competitor's store. So I think there's a lot of pressure for businesses to uh, have deals on this day uh, because uh, your competitors are going to have them and you want some of that uh, money. You want some of those customers to come to your store, of course. So there's a lot of pressure 
for businesses to have sales on Black Friday. And people are expecting this from you if you're a business. So because people are expecting it, you can get people excited uh, for this day. You can talk about uh, all the deals uh, weeks beforehand and get people excited for your deals in particular. So there's a good opportunity there that a lot of businesses uh, don't want to miss out on. So it's important for businesses, but I don't know if nowadays it's as important as it was before because uh, there are a lot of other ways to uh, do deals and to get people excited about sales. Uh, there are other occasions besides Black Friday when you can do this. So I'm not sure. I don't know how uh, the importance has changed over the years. I think it's still very important, but it might not be quite as important as it was in the past, um, but I might be mistaken. I'm not sure. Uh, that's just kind of my uh, opinion about that. But of course, uh, we all know that this is an important day for businesses, right? And in other countries, uh, besides the U.S., uh, there are different versions of Black Friday. And, uh, for example, in Mexico, uh, there's something that is called El Buen Fin. And this is kind of like their version of Black Friday, uh, which takes place um, throughout a weekend, uh, not just on one day right? So it's a weekend of deals and sales, and a lot of people go shopping on that day. And uh, maybe in your country, there's another version of this. So the U.S. has exported this tradition <laughs> to uh, other parts of the world, just like it does with many other things, of course. And then we also have Cyber Monday. So on the Monday after uh, Black Friday, there are a lot of deals that are released online specifically. So it's like a continuation of Black Friday, but it's more geared towards uh, online deals. By the way, the phrase geared towards, this means that something is aimed towards or it's personalized or customized for this reason. So it's geared towards or customized for uh, online sales. So we have this Cyber Monday tradition as well. So uh, during that whole uh, four-day period, the Friday and then the weekend after it and then the Monday, uh, following. Uh, there are a lot of deals, a lot of sales, uh, a lot of opportunities to shop and get good prices. Uh, so uh, that whole period is a big uh, shopping period. And lastly, let me just mention a little bit about my shopping, uh, my relationship with shopping. As I've already mentioned multiple times, I don't like shopping. And I actually feel kind of like I'm suffering when I have to go shopping because I just really loathe <laughs> this activity. Uh, the word loathe means that you uh, really hate or detest something. So I loathe shopping. I feel like I'm suffering through it when I have to do it. However, sometimes I have to go shopping. Right. Sometimes I have no more shoes left. <laughs> For example, my shoes are all ripped uh, or torn uh, and uh, I need new shoes uh, and I have to go shopping. By the way, if we say that something is ripped or it's torn, this means that it's broken. Uh, 
uh, we use that a lot for thinner material, uh, like clothing and things like that. So if my shoes are all ripped and torn, I have to go shopping and buy shoes. Um, so when I do go shopping, I like getting good deals. I like uh, getting discounts and things like that. So even though I'm not a fan of shopping, I do like uh, getting discounts. I like when stores have uh, good deals and different sales. I like that. However, I don't like being forced to shop on a certain day and find these deals. I don't like that. Um, I don't like shopping at any uh, moment uh, on any occasion. But when I am shopping because it's necessary, then it's nice to find these deals. It's pleasant when I'm shopping and I realize I can get a really good price on this pair of shoes, for example. So I like these deals, but I don't like being forced to go shop on a certain day uh, just for the sake of these deals. I don't like that. For the sake of just means for this reason, right? So I don't like Black Friday because I don't like that reason for going shopping. I go shopping when I need to, when it's necessary. And at that time, hopefully I can find uh, a deal or two. So yeah, that's my relationship with shopping and sales. All right, that's all for today. I hope this episode was interesting for you. Remember to sign up for my U.S. Conversations podcast to help you reach an advanced level of listening where you can understand multiple people talking fast at the same time uh, and interrupting each other and all of that. This will be great practice for you uh, so that you can uh, reach that next level of listening. So make sure to sign up. The link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US Conversations. And if you want access to my seminars, my listening practice seminars, to get my personalized training to help you listen better, then make sure to sign up for my membership, which is also down below in the description. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who's learning English, and please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. 